here today with James Goldberg. James is a poet, an essayist, novelist, editor, and literary translator focused on Mormon literature. He works for the Church History Department, and I'm so thankful to you for joining us today. Oh, I'm so glad to talk about art. Thank you. I'm a big fan of your writing. Um, so today we're talking about Easter and Holy Week, and we're looking at a piece by Jorge Coco. Uh, this is called A New Offering. It's from 2019. And Jorge Coco is an artist from Argentina. James, can you tell us a little bit about the piece we're looking at and how it might relate to Holy Week? Yeah, so, so this is a super cool piece that's depicting, presumably, Jesus giving the sacrament, instituting the sacrament among the Nephites in 3rd Nephi chapter 18. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I love the way that, that title, A New Offering, um, reminds us of this sort of fulcrum in time where they've been used to thinking about things one way. Um, in the Temple in Jerusalem, they're doing Passover offerings still, presumably Temple of Mountiful, there's a similar kind of practice. And here's this festival of, of deliverance and thank offering. And here you have Jesus coming down, delivering them from this difficult time. And then you see how he's lifting it, right? And it's not just, oh, he's passing the sacrament. Sometimes we do this thing where we project the way we do things now on the past. Sure. And like, you know, where's the deacons, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, this is this is trying to visually help bring together one way of living covenant and then this new way into a single image. And I really like that sacrificial as well as sacramental quality of the image. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. What can you tell us about sort of his style or the symbolic use yeah. of light and shape here? So Jorge Coco, um, he's a grown up now. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's older, he's been painting a long time. He's Argentine, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of his career was in Mexico. Uh, so he taught art there. And his earlier Mormon artworks, uh, a lot of them are in this very realistic style, yeah. but then trying to bring in the like, indigenous American right. visuals, right? Yeah. The, the cloths and the, and the clothes and the skin yeah. and structures of face. So, so really important Book of Mormon painter that way. Mm -hmm. But then, like late in his career, I think after he was retired or, or in the last years he was still um, working in academia, he developed this style, he's sort of tongue-in-cheek called sacral cubism, uh -huh. where he takes these abstract elements, like, like a Picasso or mm -hmm. another cubist painter, but then combines them, doesn't use them to say, oh, the world's weird and hard to track, but to, to give almost this extra reverence to something. And so you can see here, as opposed to just a realist painting, or we've got this style in the church now sometimes of like stills from movies, yes, yeah. and, we, and we use that. But I think in some ways you lose something because it says what you see is what you get. Right. And here it says this is more yeah. and invites you as a viewer to do more. And I love, um, like on his first vision painting, you see this Joseph Smith's leg has this nice roundness like he's about to fall out of the painting. And here, for me, it's Jesus' face, oh. right? So we have the very geometric cubic forms uh, that are giving this flatness. And then Jesus is round. So it's almost like when I look at this, I feel like here's half the scene in the painting and the other half is me and my world and I'm here. Uh -huh. And here's this bread of the presence, okay. which is what they called it in the temple days. That's part of how it functions in sacrament. And I'm, I'm being brought into Jesus' presence along with these American peoples. And we have the nice reminders still from his early career of the Americanness mm -hmm. of that material culture around them. And I, I really appreciate that too. Yeah, I was really struck by the details on the pottery, some of these decorative details that remind me of indigenous um, American art, um, like maybe Navajo or Hopi pottery. Yep. Um, and I think that's one really in the history of how Latter-day Saints have interpreted the Book of Mormon. From the beginning in the church in Mexico, it's been super resonant because it says this is promised land. We, after all, we've been through it, still covenant people, we're not forgotten. And so I love that our visual art is maintaining some of that tradition of how we connect with the Book of Mormon. Thank you so much for talking the, through the painting with us. I oh man, anytime you want to show me something like this, I would love to sit down with you. 
All right. Thank you, James.